Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I am going to be talking about session view in Ableton Live. Um, a lot of people do tend to put together music um, in arrangement view uh, in Ableton Live, which is typical to a lot of DAWs. Um, what's very unique about Ableton Live session view, however, is um, it's just a very fun workflow for creating music or if you're at this stage of your production where you've already loaded in a bunch of music, um, actually triggering and creating an arrangement on the fly. Okay, so right off the bat, when you're looking at your session view, it's very easy to get to this place where you have clips, uh, MIDI kind of loaded into the session view. You can drag and drop things from your Explorer into what we would call scenes, which are these cells that you see here. In the bottom right corner, you can see these buttons here. And a lot of times people don't know what these buttons do. Um, this is actually IO. So these are show hide buttons for the interface that you see right here. So if I turn that off, it's gonna hide all those IO features, um, which if you're working in session view, you probably don't need because you're not recording anything um, and you're not really worried about routing anything to anywhere else. You're just triggering your cells up here. You can actually get rid of that. So I'm gonna hit that and it's gonna clear up this um, interface a little bit more. And a lot of times you're not even really messing with your volume and you can get rid of those as well by clicking the M and that's no longer lit up. And now you have this really blank canvas uh, to work with. And you might be thinking, well, why would I get rid of all that stuff? And the reason why is because you can have as many rows of these cells as you want. So I'll click on one of these tracks and hit Control I or Command I, and it's gonna create a new uh, row of cells. And you could actually just continue hitting this. You could fill the whole page and it will go past that. Now, why this is important is because um, you could theoretically build like a one hour live set of material um, in just one session of Ableton Lives. Okay, so let's say we have what we need with our track and now we're ready to record um, into our arrangement view, uh, which if we hit tab, we can see right here. You wanna make sure that you clear out your arrangement view uh, so that there's nothing actually there. And another tip I would give people is to change your count in because when you're going to trigger your cells in Ableton Live, uh, you're going to hit this uh, record button and you're only going to be given by default a four beat or one measure count in, which is actually kind of quick, especially if you're in like a higher tempo, like this is at 110, but let's say you're in 140. Um, that's going to be very, very quick. So I'm going to go to this little arrow next to the metronome you don't have to turn the metronome on. Leave the metronome off if you don't want that clicking through your track. And I'm just gonna click on the small arrow and go to two bars. So now I've added an extra measure of beats. So I have a little more time to prepare myself once I hit that record button. Your uh, meter here goes blue, which is indicating that's count in beats. So my next tip would be how you arrange the tracks in your session view. Now what I tend to do is I put my groove loops on the far left. So groove loops or percussion or any kind of foundational musical element in the track. Uh, it's gonna be the most repetitive element in the track. And the further right to the screen that I get, um, the more particular uh, those elements become. So for instance, you have drums, then you might have bass, then you might have guitars, then you might have effects, then you might have real ambient elements or very sparse elements to the right. So it's almost like an order of importance for how you trigger different aspects of your arrangement. We're gonna hit the record button and then hit on one of the groove loops here. And one last tip I wanna get into before you start recording your arrangement um, is to make sure that this button here on the right corner is set on. So what this is gonna basically do is tell Ableton uh, that we are now going into our live session mode. And if it's not lit up like it is right here, um, we're going to hit this square. And what this square also does is it clears out if there's any sort of loops or anything that is turned on that you don't want to be on when you first start triggering your sounds and your scenes, this square button is also gonna clear everything out. When I hit the tab button, you can see all of these tracks are now grayed out. When these tracks are grayed out, it means that they're in session mode. And you can take them out of session mode too if you decide that you want to do that. You just hit this triangle here. So now I'm gonna hit the record button 
and I want to make sure that I hit something to trigger with the play button before my blue count in timer runs out. So we're going to have two bars to do that. So we hit record, hit this. Okay, so now we've triggered our arrangement recording um, using this groove loop at the top. And you can always hit the tab button and go back and forth to see your arrangement recording in action. I can also hit another loop here. This is a percussion loop. So again, order of importance in your session view. So you have your groove first, then your percussion. So I'm gonna trigger that at the start of the next measure. Now you can see that also happening on the arrangement screen. And then you can just basically experiment with adding new elements to your track, building your arrangement up from the bottom up. I want to uh, change any volumes on the tracks that I'm triggering, I can always hit this M button, bring my faders back up, let's say I turn down this synth arp, and you can mix on the fly. Let's trigger a few more things. trigger as much as you want just by hitting stuff. And your arrangement view will respond to that. I can also cut out an element by hitting the squares underneath for to stop in those tracks. You can also trigger an entire row of information by hitting the play button on the right. So in this way, these play buttons on the right side correspond to an entire row. So you can arrange your scenes to correspond to that. If you want to have a certain type of section of your song or your set, you can arrange them and make sure that they're horizontally arranged with each other. And then trigger from this side sort of a way to bring everything back together in a way you previously desired. And then you can always go back to individually triggering scenes to create new variations. When you're done with your arrangement view, you can go to the bottom right corner and this is basically, again, your all stop button. So you can stop your arrangement all together at the end of the measure. Hit the stop button there so it stops recording. And now as you can see, when I go back to my arrangement view, everything's still grayed out. It's still showing that we're in live session view. But we've basically created an arrangement for our song. So the next step that you can do is decide if you want to go into like a mixing stage with the track. So by hitting this button here, it's now engaging the arrangement view, which is very useful when you want to mix because you never know if you want to drag in some audio effects, some EQ compression on individual tracks. There's a couple of other things that you might want to consider as well though. For instance, um, if you decide that you're not happy with the way you triggered an element in your track, like let's say I wanted my Groove Loops track to trigger some different sounds instead of the ones I picked during that recording, I could delete all of this stuff, hit Tab, go back to Arrangement View, and then basically hit the Stop button on that track, which is that square there, and that's immediately going to re-engage it into Session View. And then I can basically play my arrangement hit record and start triggering other elements uh, in a different way 
while all the other elements that I created in my arrangement view can stay the same. So I can sort of react or respond to what I chose, uh, but just picking different grooves to go along with it. That's sort of the hybrid approach. Um, another thing that people don't necessarily consider when they're mixing in Ableton is the fact that you can bounce down your mixes um, into one track. So how I would do that is I would hit Control T or Command T to make an audio track. Um, I might rename this, say, Mix 1. And then I'm going to click all the other tracks, hold down Shift Click to select all of them in a row. And then actually have these go out instead of to the master bus, I would have these go out to mix one. So what that's going to do is when I click record, I'm actually going to bus all of these sounds into one audio track. So this can be extremely useful if you're uh, doing any kind of live set material and you just actually want to bounce a whole arrangement into one track. Um, now you might be asking yourself, why would I do that? Well, the reason why is because once you've done something like this, I've now created basically a whole arrangement of my track into one audio clip. And what you can do is, let's say I consolidate this down into just an eight bar phrase, hit Control J to consolidate it into its own clip. I might also rename it, so mix one scene. And then I'm going to click drag hit tab while I'm still holding the uh, mouse and I'm going to drag this into its own scene so what I've done is I've taken a piece of my arrangement and I've actually created a new track with just the arrangements in their own scenes so this is a very powerful way to continue consolidating down um, and having tons and tons of your music uh, just be able to re-trigger it on the fly. And again, like I said, you could create several rows of these arrangement scenes. So that's something else that people can consider doing. So obviously there's a lot of creativity and flexibility to using Session View, whether you're trying to create an arrangement for your song or arrangement for a live set. And one last tip I would recommend to people is you don't always have to record these tracks into arrangement view um, the way you see them here. So I can actually clear out my arrangement view and I can actually have all of these tracks uh, record on the fly into that mix bus track that we created earlier. So what I do here is I'm gonna go back to my IO button. I'm gonna click that and I'm going to create an audio track. Again, we'll make this our mix bus audio track. And the reason why I brought my IO back up is so that I can send everything. I'm gonna shift click to select all the other tracks and I'm going to send these tracks uh, to the mix. So you can see here that audio is going to instead of going to the master it's going to go to the mix bus and now what's going to happen is when I hit record I'm going to record all this arrangement into the mix bus in the live session view so I'm going to make sure that this track is armed for recording and then I'm going to hit stop just to reset everything I'm going to hit this stop button here so we go into session view and you wanna make sure that you have your monitor set on. So we're gonna hit auto to make sure the monitoring is set on. And then we're gonna hit record. Trigger a few things. So now we're monitoring what we're triggering, but instead of it recording into its own individual tracks, everything is recording into our mix track in a live setting. So this is also how you record your DJ sets um, or your live sets into one stereo track on the fly. Trigger a few more things. basically my whole set now is inside this one stereo track. So this is very useful for people who again are doing uh, live DJ sets or something where they want to record their arrangement directly into uh, a stereo bus track. 
um, and they could just really easily either consolidate it down to make a scene out of it like we talked about earlier or they just want to mix it and master it and bounce it out to be a track that they can upload to SoundCloud or something like that. And yeah, if you're into making music with Ableton packs, which you can actually purchase from different companies and sort of open them up and everything will just spill out onto the screen like this, it's a really fun way to make music. Um, I actually have this pack available for free on my Gumroad store, a link is in the description. But yeah, if you got something useful from this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more. I put out new videos pretty often, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Have fun.